Welcome back. With the stroke of a pen by Jane Bloffus deals with some very tough questions when it comes to a topic that many of us don't always discuss openly. The, de the death of a loved one and the preparations that go along with that. Joining us now with more to talk about her book is Jane herself. I appreciate you joining us, Jane. Thank you for the invitation, Ross. Uh, first off, let's talk about the uh, first chapter in your book. It's called The Day My World Turned Upside Down. And that sort of got you on the path to helping people deal with some of these issues. Why don't you uh, talk about your experience first. Well, uh, the day my, my world turned upside down was when my 39-year-old uh, husband went out in the morning, said goodbye, and that afternoon a police officer walked up my driveway to inform me that he'd been killed in an accident. And I spent 16 years in the life insurance industry. I was an advisor. I um, was uh, you know, in management at the time, lots of experience, a designation. And I thought I would be prepared, wrongly prepared, if anything happened. Mm -hmm. And I was blindsided by an, an awful lot of things after he died. What were some of the things that, because uh, you said you were in the industry, so what are some of the things that, that surprised you or blindsided you? Um, one of the things was that I tried to go and pay off my mortgage. That's what a lot of people buy life insurance for. And when I went to the financial institution, I was told I couldn't pay it off. So I asked why. And I found out that we had just renegotiated a five-year term on our mortgage, and we're only one year into it, so I was told I would have to wait four years if I wanted to pay it off. I didn't know that. Right. So that got you on the path to giving advice to other people, and, and you've written the book. Uh, talk about the book and, and uh, why people would want to read it. What, uh, what, sort of, what, what are you aiming at, or what are you trying to, to tell people? Well, first of all, I'm trying to dispel the myth. One, it will never happen to me. It might happen to you, but it won't happen to me, because people don't want to talk about this. People are fearful of the subject. If you want to clear a room, don't yell fire, just bring up the subject. <laughs> so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help people to get over the fear of talking about right. this subject. I'm, I'm hoping to get people having courageous conversations across all of the generations about this. So you've uh, brought along some of the top tips that you suggest mm -hmm. uh, from your book and we're going to take a look at some of them right now and perhaps you can help us out here. So sure. uh, first off, building a solid trusting relationship with your financial advisors you think is key? It's, it's absolutely key. Um, as I said, I was in the insurance industry. I knew everything that went on in our house financially, but I couldn't decide if I wanted peas or carrots for dinner after he died. So I relied on my financial advisor who literally took my hand, led me through the fog, and helped me make some of the most monumental financial mm -hmm. decisions. The time to start a relationship with a financial advisor is not after someone passes away. Right. It's before. It's the trust factor. Right. Next up, uh, review your insurance coverage annually to make sure uh, it's still meeting your needs. Exactly. You cannot just buy a life insurance policy, stick it in a drawer, and maybe pull it out five or ten years and look at it later. Things happen. There's different stages in life that we all go through, so you must review it annually to make sure it still meets the needs today. Right. And part of what you were talking about before, having the courage to have these conversations, which are not easy, no. you, see, you, you say that's, that's key too. It is key. We have a responsibility to ourselves and to those we love to leave this world in an organized manner. And that means that you've got to have courageous conversations with mm -hmm. the people that you love and talk about what do you want. My husband, I tried four times, would never tell me what his final wishes were. I made all of the decision, decisions about funeral, monumental things, blind, mm -hmm. totally blind. It was like he tied my hands. So, so much easier, obviously, if you have so those much things. Easier. And uh, last here, have an up-to-date uh, will drawn up by a lawyer. People often say, oh, I don't want to go to a lawyer. They charge too much or whatever. Lawyers are worth their weight in gold when you need them. And one of the things, proper planning really helped to save our lives financially, and we had had our wills redone the year before. If not, my situation could have been very, very different. Wills are not as expensive as people think. You need to go in and you need to sit down with somebody who knows what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, some great advice, and I appreciate you sharing your story with us and some Thank of that you. advice. How can people uh, get the book if they want to? They can get the book off our website, www.janebloffis.com, and I'd love it if people wanted to follow me on Twitter at Jane Bloffis. I really want to keep these courageous conversations going with people. Oh, great. And if you would like more information on Jane's book, you can find a link on our website. Just go to links and numbers. Thanks again, Jane. Thanks, Ross.